Welcome to Gay Fairfax. We're the National Capital Area's only weekly gay cable magazine, and we share news, views, and pride. Hi, I'm Barry Forbes. Hi, and I'm Michelle Michaels. Each week, we'll feature events and personalities of interest to gay men and women in Northern Virginia. On this edition of Gay Fairfax, we'll be attending the annual banquet of the Human Rights Campaign Fund, and we'll be talking with some of the guests, such as D.C. Mayor Sharon Pratt Dixon, as well as U.S. Congressman Barney Frank. And we'll enjoy the Gay Pride Day performance of the popular lesbian singer-songwriter, Farron. But first, here's Peg McCraw with this week's Gay Trivia Question. Television heartthrobs, oh yes. Charlie's Angels, The Bionic Woman, Emma Peel, sweet memories. But what about the guys? What TV he-men made your little gay hearts beat faster? Can you name three 60s TV heroes idolized and fantasized about by gay men. Be right back. Don't go away. Thank you, Peg. You can bet I'll stay tuned to the end of the show. Now, the Human Rights Campaign Fund is the largest gay lobbying group and the 16th largest political action committee of any kind in the entire country. In the District of Columbia, their annual banquet is a way to raise money and to bring gay women and men to the political bargaining table, if you will. Hosted by HRCF Executive Director Tim McFeely, the banquet attracted such guests as D.C. Mayor Sharon Pratt Dixon and U.S. Congressman Barney Frank, who were there to hear the keynote speaker, former Vice Presidential Candidate Geraldine Ferraro. community have dressed ourselves in our best finery. We've rented one of the largest ballrooms in Washington, and we've publicly gathered together to celebrate our political power and our powerful community. What a triumphant and outrageous act. We're here at the Human Rights Campaign Fund annual banquet with uh, Tim McFeely, who's the head of the whole organization. Thank you for being with us on Gay Fairfax. Thank you. Tell us something about the Human Rights Campaign Fund. It is one of the largest political action committees in the country. Is that right? That's right. The Human Rights Campaign Fund is a political action committee for the lesbian and gay community, and it's one of the largest of all PACs in the entire country. It's probably in the top 1% of all PACs, all federal PACs. I think we rank 21st, 22nd in the nation. That's pretty impressive. What does that mean in dollar terms? How much do you put out each year? Um, in the last cycle, in the 89-90 cycle, we uh, gave away $525,000 to candidates for federal office. We, we give money to candidates for the United States Senate and House of Representatives. Um, in this next cycle, the cycle we're presently in, the 91-92 cycle, we plan to give away $1 million. That sounds great. How successful have you been in choosing winning candidates that you give money to? Well, our record is pretty impressive, um, but uh, incumbents all, always have an advantage. So we tend to play incumbents, incumbents who are good on our issues. We have basically our, our, our major criteria in terms of giving money to candidates for federal office, if they're incumbents, is their record on our issues. We, we are legislatively driven. We look to see what they have voted uh, in terms of AIDS issues, in terms of women's health issues, in terms of gay civil rights, uh, civil rights generally, and uh, uh, other issues that are of concern to our community. What's the direction that you think the campaign fund will be taking in the next five years? 
Well, I think we're going to reach out to more and more candidates from the non-urban areas or from the, the non-coastal areas, more into the heartland. We need support there. And uh, also, we're spending more and more of our resources mobilizing constituents around the country, putting some of the resources back into the grassroots organizing effort so that people in the Midwest, the South, other places in this country can let their voices be heard and uh, influence and themselves become citizen lobbyists as gay and lesbian Americans uh, with their Congress people. So do you see the campaign fund as having an educational effort as well as a purely political effort? Absolutely. I think that's really where we want to go. What the end point is, is to make sure that lesbians and gay men in this country understand what the issues are, understand how their Congress Pearson and their senator, uh, senators are voting on those issues, and become involved in the process. When people all over this country, gays and lesbians, can become involved, we won't need to be here anymore. And I think that is the dream that we all hope will someday will happen. We're here with Gay Fairfax's crew at the Human Rights Campaign Fund annual dinner with Mayor Sharon Pratt Dixon of the District of Columbia. Welcome to Gay Fairfax. Well, delighted. There, there are a lot of important issues facing gay men and lesbians in the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, would you like to comment on some of the issues that you'll be working on as, as mayor of the of largest city in the district in the I'm, area? Well, one of the critical issues is clearly the domestic partnership uh, uh, law. Uh, and uh, I'm very supportive of it. I think it's a key and pivotal issue. Uh, for the gay and lesbian community, uh, and I think that's one that's going to receive a lot of energy and a lot of attention on the part of this administration. That's a very important issue. There's something related to that that's uh, hitting the District of Columbia right now, and that's a lawsuit filed by two gay men who would like to be married. Uh, what's the position of the mayor's office on, on that right now? Well, I think, uh, again, I think the best way to resolve that is to deal with the domestic partnership legislation. I think that uh, given the way the law was uh, enacted with respect to marriage, uh, I think the better way to go is with the domestic partnership law. I think that we've got great precedents across the country. I think we can pull it off here in the District of Columbia. I think we can set an example for America. Uh, and I think that is the way that we can really deal with a lot of the key and important issues that are associated with that lawsuit. The other issue that's facing uh, gay men, especially in the District of Columbia, is the issue of AIDS. What's the, the future on, on D.C. policy in, in regards to education and, and funding for AIDS treatment and research? Well, it's a matter of great importance to this administration again. We've been able to recruit one of the finer, uh, I think, directors in the country, and that is Catlin Ryan. Um, I think that uh, we have, uh, we're putting the funding in place. Uh, we enable, I think we can get, capture a lot of federal dollars, a lot of private foundation money. We were able to capture some pri pri private foundation money and also to raise the consciousness of everybody in the District of Columbia with respect to this issue, uh, particularly in some of our neighborhoods that have not always tuned into this issue. Uh, and that's a role that we intend to play very aggressively, very effectively through our own uh, cable access channels as well as a number of other vehicles. That's a very important issue and, it's, and it achieves a lot of and, and receives a lot of uh, priority in the administration. You're such a politically sophisticated audience, I do want to do a little bit of rumor control before going any further. There's a vicious rumor going around this town that I have my eye on Al D'Amato's seat. <laughs> For the record, let me stay here and now. That is categorically untrue. <laughs> Never have my eye on Al D'Amato's seat. It's his job I want. Okay. Now it'd be me. 
It is rare that I get to speak before a community that can celebrate the progress that you have achieved of late. Tonight, I want to take a look at those achievements in a larger context. How they fit into where we find ourselves as a nation and what issues we face ahead, both for the lesbian and gay communities and for the larger community we share as Americans. It's easy to start with the good news because there's been a lot of it in the last two years. We've seen the passage of the Hate Crime Statistics Act with sexual orientation included, obviously. Obviously, that was just the beginning. Keeping statistics is scarce consolation to the victims of those horrible crimes. In passing that law, the United States Congress took a first step to address bias-related hate crimes against all Americans, despite Jesse Helms' best efforts to keep lesbians and gay men out in the statistical closet. As HRCF members, you can feel proud of your organization's central role in helping pass that legislation. This is just one early battle in a long war, but it marks an important and long overdue milestone. The same is true of the passage last year of the Americans with Disabilities Act. That legislation added a strong plank to our nation's anti-discrimination platform. By specifically including people with HIV disease, it gave us a powerful legal tool to redress discrimination in all its guises. And these days, with this court, we need every tool we can get. We can also celebrate the passage last year of the Ryan White Bill. From my own experience in Congress, I found that especially impressive. I know firsthand how hard it is to get that body to solve problems creatively. Ryan White Bill was a creative and bold measure to, root, to round emergency funds to the city's hardest hit by the epidemic. And I give you real credit, and I give credit to Ted Kennedy and Henry Waxman for co-sponsoring it. We're at the Human Rights Cam Campaign Fund annual dinner with Congressman Barney Frank of Massachusetts. Congressman, you're one of the most prominent openly gay politicians in the country. Could you tell us what you would uh, say to a young person, a young openly gay person who's interested in a career in politics? That it's uh, gotten easier than it was. It's not as easy as it should be in a rational and logical world that wouldn't be an issue at all. It's still something of an issue, but I think that the prejudice against us is diminishing substantially. And what I would say to people is if they, if they can be out, and it's not an easy decision, and it certainly took me long enough uh, uh, before I decided I was ready to, to do it. But if people can be out and, and they are politically active, that's helpful. Because the gap between the inaccurate stereotypes so many people have and, and the kind of vicious prejudices that, that some people have, and the reality is so great that most Americans, I've found, when they're exposed to it, when they are confronted by the by the fact that gay men and lesbians are just like everybody else, the prejudice kind of sinks out of sight. And another person said to me, Kate, you know, when you get up in the morning, each of us has to decide whether we're going to save or savor the world. Well, it affects scheduling. <laughs> but we know as gay people, as lesbians, as thinking people, that it's not a question of save or savor. We know we have to do both save and savor the world, and it's a world that would like to gentrify the wildness of our souls, and would like to trivialize the power of our desire, but we are saying we won't have that. It's, we say it by our presence here tonight, and by the gay and lesbian presence we take into the world. It's been a pleasure being here. Won't you please, with me, welcome back to the stage our dinner co-chairs, Lisa Sherman and Bob Whittick, for a final toast. Pose a toast tonight. Would everybody raise their glasses, please? To family, to friends, to the Human Rights Campaign Fund, we salute you in an unforgettable evening. Cheers. Cheers.
funny how local straight newspapers print the details of lots of other TV shows, but not Gay Fairfax? Hmm. Hmm. Don't be daunted. Every member of the Fairfax Lesbian and Gay Citizens Association receives a listing of upcoming programs. So why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you? Why, it's so easy to become a member that even I'm a member of FLGCA. Dues are just $12 for the entire year, and for that, you get your monthly newsletter coming to your door with the Gay Fairfax listing. So write to us at Post Office Box 2322, Springfield, Virginia, 22152, or just call us. But wait till after the show to call us at 703-451-9528. Lesbian singer-songwriter Farron has built a wildly enthusiastic following in both the U.S. and Canada. And she certainly wowed the celebrants at the 1991 D.C. Gay and Lesbian Pride Day. Here now are some of the highlights of that exciting performance of Farron. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is my distinct pleasure, I feel like I'm welcoming a head of state, okay? It is my distinct pleasure to bring on stage one of Canada's finest singer-songwriters who has put out for our enjoyment several albums including Testimony, Shadows on a Dime, and most recently, Phantom Center, I give you now, Farron! What are you going to do when it rains? Mountain. 
the thriller. He said, I feel close, I bet I'm longing. With eagle teeth for wit. Come on, eagle teeth for wit. Come on, eagle teeth for wit. Come on, eagle teeth for wit. Complicit crime, we were strangers to the plan. An old old woman ran the gears, she couldn't move. They said she'd been there 40 years. I think that's rude, cause 40 years is 40 years, and I was only 15 then. And the work which wore upon our backs, and we gauged our steps, and we didn't look slack. And one day the old woman didn't come back. I couldn't work so well, and they let me go. But I don't forget about the factory I don't expect this ride to always be Can I give you what you want to see? Will we do it one more time? Catch your breath and settle down, because here's Peg McCraw with the answer to this week's gay trivia question. Now, I want you to know that these answers are based on research. After all, how would I know? Did your heart flutter for Ron Ely, Tarzan from 1966 to 1969, Vince Edwards, Ben Casey from 1961 through 1966, or how about Robert Conrad? James West from 1965 to 1969. Well, that wraps up this edition of Gay Fairfax. Now, don't forget, you can tune us in every week at this time. We'll close this week's show with an encore of Farron at the D.C. Lesbian and Gay Pride Day. For Gay Fairfax, I'm Michelle Michaels. And I'm Barry Forbes. Thank you very much for joining us today. And remember to keep the pride alive. It tastes like wine And wine can smell of money Though money may sniff the karmic line It turns a force to honey Honey for our cup of tea And honey for our toddy And honey for our minds so free And honey for our baby 